is absolutely no limit to the United States' technological evolution. This nation has yet again invested a mind-blowing $200 billion in the development of its sixth-generation fighter jet, the NGAD. No other nation even comes close to developing such high-tech fighters. Guess what? This fighter jet is set to replace the formidable and most reverend F-22 Raptor. Is this next-generation fighter the future of air dominance? What are the futuristic designs of this air fighter? Join us as we explore the unique features of the $200 billion sixth-generation fighter jet that is ready for action. Aircraft is set to take over the formidable and feared. Throughout history, the continuous evolution of technology has affected the tools that are used in warfare from dated weapons to sophisticated machinery like tanks and aircraft. The evolution of warfare has been shaped by technological breakthroughs, leading to significant changes in warfare strategies. In this modern age, scientific research has positively promoted the development of new technologies for both military and civilian purposes. For instance, European nations with their superior technology used warfare not only against each other, but also to conquer and colonize other nations. The gradual transition from industrial age warfare to the modern era was marked by the Gulf War, where the use of precision weapons and advanced information systems was first observed. The noticeable changes that had been observed in modern warfare includes extending the range and accuracy of weapons, increasing volume and precision of firepower, integrating systems for better command and control, and enhancing transparency on the battlefield. Force multipliers, such as advanced technology and combined arms tactics, allow smaller units to achieve decisive effects. Information warfare technologies are becoming increasingly important, focusing on dominating information systems to gain military advantages. This limitless advancement in technology has led to the development of something truly sophisticated, a technology that has pushed the boundaries of what was thought possible. This new project has reshaped military strategies in more than one way. The Next Generation Air Dominance, also known as NGAD, is a project by the United States Air Force to develop a new kind of super advanced aircrafts that will be even better than the formidable F-22 Raptor in terms of everything, speed, stealth, and even lethality. The main part of this project is creating a manned fighter jet that is known as the Penetrating Counter Air Platform, which is to be supported by unmanned combat aircraft referred to as Loyal Wingman Platforms. This program is definitely not a sudden thought, as the NGAD idea came from a study by DARPA way back in 2014, and they plan to have the new fighter plane ready by the 2030s. Originally, the Air Force and Navy were going to work on it together, but now they each have their own separate projects. The Navy's version is called the f axxx and it's also set to be ready around the same time as the Air Force's. The NGAD project is aimed towards redefining the future of air combat by enhancing air dominance capabilities in highly contested environments with improved lethality and survivability, departing from mere tweaks to existing technologies and instead reimagining the entirety of air combat's future, having originated from the goal of replacing the F-22 Raptor by 2030. In 2005, the Raptor became very important for the U.S. Air Force because it was really good at controlling the skies. It had special features like being hard to detect, going fast and being able to move quickly. Plus, it had really smart technology inside. But because of the constant evolution of warfare strategies, the Air Force decided they needed something even better. So they started the NGAD project to make a new kind of plane that could do even more than the F-20, especially in places where air dominance is paramount. As mentioned earlier, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency were looking into ideas for air superiority systems for the U.S. NVM Air Force and Navy in the 2030s. After finishing their air dominance initiative study in March 2014, DARPA's results led the Department of Defense to start the Aerospace Innovation Initiative in 2015. This aimed to make prototype X-planes to show off future fighter plane technology. In 2016, the Air Force added on to DARPA's work with their Air Superiority 2030 plan. But even though they talked about needing a bunch of different systems, 
they were still mostly focused on one type called the penetrating counter air. This change meant it wasn't just about one type of aircraft anymore. It was about a whole group of systems working together. The main goal of the NGAD program is to create technologies that help the Air Force control the sky. These technologies focus on things like making planes go faster, harder to see, and able to carry better weapons. They're also looking at using computers to design the planes and manage their heat. This program is changing how the Air Force usually gets new planes. They're splitting up the jobs of designing, making, and supporting the planes. They've set aside $9 billion to do this by 2025. They're also having more competitions and trying out their designs, testing it more often to make sure they work well. Even though NGAD started as just one type of plane, now they're talking about making a whole group of different systems. But at the center of it all is a piloted fighter plane. It'll have other supporting systems like drones and computer systems to help it do its job better. They're aiming to make a system that works well in the Indo-Pacific area where current Air Force planes don't have enough range or power. They might even make two versions, one for the Indo-Pacific and one for closer battle areas like Europe. This new fighter plane is expected to use really advanced engines, which should be ready by 2025. They initially wanted to make these new fighters really quickly like they did with planes in the 1950s. But now they're going for a more traditional approach. They plan to start using these new fighters in the 2030, once they have enough of them. They're even testing some of the new technology on existing planes like the F-22. In June 2022, the US Air Force decided that important technologies were ready to support the next phase of the program called Engineering and Manufacturing Development. They had already tested a full-scale prototype of the NGAD fighter plane in 2020 as part of the AII X-Plane program, and by 2023, they had tested three different prototypes. They officially asked for proposals in May 2023, with the plan to choose a company to work with by 2024. On July 27, 2023, Kathy Warden, the CEO and president of Northrop Grumman, mentioned that her company wouldn't bid to lead the project. That means Boeing and Lockheed Martin are the likely two companies still in the running to build the main fighter plane for the program. The NGAD platform is more than just making a new fighter jet. It's about a complete plan for being in control of the skies, air dominance. It is similar to a combination of piloted and unmanned aircraft, seamlessly connected with cyber and electronic systems, all working together. And with the start of the NGAD project, the competition for a next-level fighter began. What makes a sixth-generation fighter so special? The generation is a term used to denote major advancements in aircraft abilities, and six simply means that it is way more advanced than the fifth generation. It's a way of tracking how these amazing machines have evolved from the earliest propeller-driven fighters to the stealthy, connected jets we have now. Let us have a look at fifth-generation fighters like the Raptor. These aircraft have important features like being stealthy, advanced computer systems, the ability to do many different tasks, and the ability to fly faster than the speed of sound without using up lots of fuel. They can do both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missions in one flight while staying mostly invisible to enemy radar. Let's look ahead and think about what a sixth-generation fighter might be like. These aren't just small changes to what we already have. They're huge improvements that will completely change how the United States controls the sky. First, this next generation aircraft is equipped with a smart computer system that makes everything easy. From planning missions to talking about what happened after the flight is much easier. The fighter will have its own smart helper that will help the pilot do their job better so they can focus on flying. Lots of different information will be put together so the pilot knows exactly what's happening around them. It's common knowledge that communication is super important when engaged in war. With regards to this, the NGAD will have really good ways of communicating with other aircraft and people on the ground. Pilots will even have special screens that show them extra information about what's happening around them. Now to the propulsion system, unlike other previous generation aircraft, the NGAD will be propelled by an engine that will enable the aircraft to go really fast when needed and also slow down to save fuel without causing any damage. Basically, these sixth-generation fighters will be way better than what we have now. 
There's very little information on the developmental process of the fighter, and this is because the United States Air Force has been keeping a lot of details about the next generation air dominance project secret. But some recent reports have given us an idea of what the NGAD would look like and its futuristic capabilities. This next chapter of air dominance includes a future where America attains a complete air superiority involving a huge number of advanced drones called loyal wingmen, along with 35 really advanced F-35 Lightning II, and the star of the show, 200 brand new sixth generation NGAD fighters. But it's not just the US that is investing huge amounts of money in air superiority. Countries like Russia, China, Japan, the UK and France are also working on their own ideas for sixth generation fighters. However, the US is expected to be the first to actually use a sixth generation fighter, partly because they're spending over $200 billion on it. But wait, the NGAD is not the only new concept under development. The United States Navy is planning to change its focus to flying instead of sailing. They want their ships, like aircraft carriers, to send aircrafts into the sky instead of sailing on the water. It's all to show off the Navy's power and strength. The idea of a flying aircraft carrier isn't new. It's been around since the World Wars. Now, with better technology, they're getting more focus, especially from the U.S. The U.S. has a lot of sea-based aircraft carriers, making up 25% of the world's total, with deck space more than double that of all other countries combined. It is common knowledge that the members of the lead USS Ford class of these aircraft carriers are far more lethal than every other aircraft carrier in history. First, because of its nuclear power, the two Bechtel A1B nuclear reactors, the most cutting edge engines created for use on water power, the USS Gerald Ford. As a result, the carrier would only need to be refueled once over its entire 50 year operational life, as these engines make use of the everlasting nature of nuclear energy. This means USS Ford can run for 25 years at a time without refueling, and with a peak speed of around 30 knots, the supercarrier can access every country on the planet just in time to pay friendly visits to allies and wreak havoc on enemies. Another reason is because of the new sensors and processing systems. USS Ford features the latest sensors, processors, and weapons needed on an aircraft carrier to maintain that balance of intelligence and lethality. Unlike virtually every other aircraft carrier in the world, the USS Ford features a single system for both horizon and volume search in the form of the AN slash SPY-3 multifunction radar for X and S band active electronically scanned array. It remains the most advanced radar system from the US with enough versatility to handle surveillance, air traffic control, missile communications, and spot targets from miles away. The last reason is American fighter jets and UAVs. Up to 75 fighter jets and unmanned aerial vehicles can call the USS Ford home at a time, including the Navy's fifth generation F-35C Lightning II Joint Strike Fighter, whose development program remains the most expensive weapons development program of the Pentagon to date, with a reported cost of $4 billion. The expensive program resulted in a fighter that can do many things, support close air missions, take off and land vertically, and more making it the go-to fighter for the Navy and other military branches. But eventually, a newer fighter, the sixth-generation FAXX, will become the main focus. The USS Ford is ready for this change with the necessary technology. All these advancements make the U.S. very strong at sea. An airborne version of these technologies could make the U.S. dominant in the skies, which is a big goal. To achieve this goal, many programs have been started. While real flying carrier ideas aren't as flashy as the fictional helicarrier from Marvel's Shield, they're the closest anyone has gotten in the last 100 years. Looking back to 1917, there were experiments with small aircraft hanging under airships called microfighters. These were mainly for protecting the airships. As airships fell out of use, different flying carrier programs emerged, each with its unique features. In the 1970s, the U.S. Air Force toyed with the idea of turning a big plane into a flying carrier for smaller fighters. They looked at planes like the Lockheed C-5 Galaxy and the Boeing 747. Boeing 747 was favored because it could carry a lot of weight over a long distance. They planned to make special small fighters that could fit inside the 747. These fighters could be carried, dropped off to fight, 
picked up again, and refueled if needed. But there were concerns about fuel range and how well the fighters would handle tough opponents. Despite these challenges, Boeing's reports showed that the idea was technically attainable, although it would be expensive. Lockheed, a renowned aviation company, went even bigger with their idea. They proposed a flying carrier as big as a regular one. This massive aircraft would weigh over 5,000 tons and be as tall as a 14-story building. It would have a super long wingspan and fuselage, and huge turbofan engines would power it up to a certain height. Then a nuclear reactor would take over, allowing it to fly for over a month without stopping. It could carry a crew of 8,000 fighters and had space for repairs. But the cost and effort to make and maintain it were enormous, so the project never got beyond the planning stage. However, the concept remains a fascinating piece of history that still gets attention today. The B-36 Peacemaker was a big bomber from the 1950s that they thought about upgrading to carry small fighters. They planned to use the McDonnell F-85 Goblin as a small fighter, fitting up to four inside the B-36. It was chosen because it was huge and heavy, with wings even bigger than the B-52 Stratofortress. It was one of the biggest planes ever made, weighing a whopping 400,000 pounds when fully loaded with fuel and weapons. Even though the B-36 was impressive, it never flew any real missions. By the time it was ready, World War II had ended, so there was no need to bomb Berlin efficiently anymore. The Air Force thought about using it as a flying carrier, but then they figured out how to refuel planes midair, which made the B-36's long range less important. Moving on from old ideas, the U.S. has been thinking about a new flying carrier program since 2015. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency has been looking at using a modified Lockheed C-130 Hercules cargo plane to deploy and support small drones called Dynetics X-61 Gremlins. These drones can be launched from the C-130 and then recovered using a special method. Tests are being conducted at Dugway Proving Grounds, and one successful test in January 2022 showed the drone launching from the C-130. If the tests go well, this program would let the U.S. deploy drones from bigger ships, keeping them safe from enemy air defenses. The drones could go on missions and then come back to the ship for maintenance or repairs. However, the test didn't go as well as expected. Even though one test proved the drone could be launched by the C-130, it ended up being destroyed after an hour and a half of flight due to a parachute failure. But fixing this problem should be straightforward and can be avoided in future tests. Once this hurdle is overcome, the program will keep going as planned. It will also help other similar programs grow and eventually give the U.S. the ability to have a supercarrier in the sky, adding to its already strong fleet of aircraft carriers. Let's also take a look at the future of hypersonic missiles in the United States. The United States has also started the development process of advanced hypersonic weapons like the Mutant and the Hawk missile. The United States has equally invested in developing missiles which can change direction mid-flight and fly at incredibly high speeds, respectively. Their ability to change directions makes it hard for defense systems to intercept and has posed a great threat to less technologically advanced nations. However, these advancements in air defense systems aim to counter modern airborne threats more effectively. In addition to that, the United States is also working on the long-range hypersonic weapon, a medium-range missile with plans for deployment by both the Army and Navy. The LRHW, known as Dark Eagle, represents a significant step forward in military technology. It also stands as a testament to the ongoing progress in American defense capabilities. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.